Hello, Internet. I hope you're doing really well. I'm Daniel, the Pitch Professor, and this title got me really intrigued. Do you understand what gross profit is? Well, do you? Um, I would expect if you're an entrepreneur, you should. Um, I would assume if you are to go pitching in the Dragon's Den, Shark's Tank, or just in front of like any grown-up, you should kind of know, because you have to know your numbers. Yet this title seemed very promising. So, honestly, um, let's have a look at this together. Uh, this should be a good one. Uh, you see, I haven't seen much more than a minute of it, uh, just to kind of see if it's actually working and my, and my whole setup is. So, let's go in. Um, by the way, I hope you do know what gross profit is. Um, if not... Yeah, let's find out together. Um, and it is, by the way, you have a product, you sell it for a price, let's say 10 euros, and it costs you uh, 5 euros um, in buying the parts you need for this to production, and, and that means a gross profit of 5 euros. So essentially, it's the selling price minus the cost of production. But no labor costs and whatnot, so basically just the stuff you buy um, is deducted. Anyhow. Stop rambling. Let's watch the video. Next up are Chris Left Terry and Forrest Radford. No. Left Terry and Forrest. I mean, I shouldn't be saying anything here, but my inner 12 year old is kind of getting excited, Ray, because now I'm going to stay professional. I'm going to stay professional. But it's quite. Names. Bullshit. No pacing with a product that they think is revolutionary. We've come up with a way to repair stuff that tape and glue can't. Oh, I'm quite excited about this then. Repair stuff that glue can't and tape. Repair stuff that glue and tape can't. Repair stuff that glue and tape can't. That sounds very promising. So. I'm expecting some incredible carbon, space age, whatever stuff. Um, oh, Stephen's going to love that video. That, that, that's still right now. Um, but let's see. And I just heard the other guy say, no bullshit, no pacing, whatever that means. I don't think the dragons are going to have seen anything like this before. Mm, expectation management. Really good ideas of how they can help us take this to the next level. Hi Dragons, my name is Chris Lefteri, I'm founder of Fixits. And my name is Forrest, and I'm the co-founder of Fixits. Fixits is a... I gotta stop here quickly. The one guy says he's the founder, and the other says he's the co-founder. Now for me, this is an interesting detail. It might seem like nothing, but for me, either there's two people who are co-founders, or there's a single founder, but there's not like a founder and several co-founders. So that seems for me... Like, this could be room for a bit of a conflict. And if I'm listening to this, that's the first point where you're like, what? And then what happens is that my brain goes wandering. And I'm at that, from that point on, I see a tiny little, not red flag, but, you know, I see, I see a reddish at the dawn where I go like, hmm, hmm. And from then on, I start looking out for signals between the two of them. They're dynamic. Do they, do they work well with one another? Or is there maybe some sort of conflict, some underlying issues? Um, might seem like nothing, but just understand when you introduce yourself like that, you prime the audience who's looking for something. There's something wrong. There has to be something not necessarily wrong, but just for signs to understand how high or how low is the risk. And this, for me, would already be something which will get me intrigued. Not intrigued in a good way. Interested. That's the word I was looking for. A totally new, unique product to repair things in a way that tape and glue can't. Using nothing more than this stick dunked into some hot water, they turn into a soft moldable putty and then into a hard, durable repair in less than five minutes. We're here to ask you for £45,000 for 12% in fixits to help us make it the kitchen drawer essential repair brand. We're both industrial designers and we both hate throwing things away if they can be repaired. Small thing here, we are both industrial designers um, again doesn't mean much 
But over the years, and if you're new to this, I've worked on thousands of pitches um, together. That's why I'm called the pitch professor. Um, two industrial designers means an amazing design, an amazing packaging, an amazing product, yet no ability to sell the thing, no ability to build the company around it. And that's something I've seen over and over and over again. If you have two incredible techies, well, that's good. Uh, two means incredible tech, but no ability to build a company. Uh, two marketers, killer story, but no product. Two designers, amazing slides, but that's it. Amazing product, potentially. I know I'm overdoing it, but again, this is the message this sentence tells me. By the way, the, the product they, 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 they have, that stick thing, kind of reminds me of, you know, what you get, like when you go to the doctor and they, they push down your tongue, you go, like, uh. And what I just saw, it kind of, my expectation was something here, you know, like crazy space age, whatever. And essentially it looks like, how should I say in a polite way, like kind of a mixture of chewing gum and play-doh. Um, but let's see. The most unique thing about fixits is that they are reusable. So if you don't like what you've made, just put it back in the hot water and repeat the whole process again and again and again. Play -Doh. Here you'll see the fixit stick has become soft and moldable. <laughs> I can remove it, pinch off what Sorry. I need, saving the rest for later. And this magical material can be stretched and molded around anything you want to create a hard and durable fix that glue and tape cannot achieve. In the boxes beside you, you'll find packs of fixits that you can dunk into some hot water that you have in a flask next to you. And we welcome any questions. Now, it was a little disrespectful there, and I didn't mean to, but if they show it, show it like this, my brain goes chewing gum, play do. And what I would want to hear at this point in time saying it, yes, it right, might remind you of chewing gum or play do, however, that's a very special word, however, it comes with the capabilities of carbon fiber. Or you take this tiny bit, put it on there, and it will be able to hold the rear wing of a Formula One car going 200 miles an hour upside down. Something where I understand that this is a real quantum leap forward. I'd like to have a number that shows to me the actual significance of it. Because at this point in time, my brain is going chewing gum, play do. And you know, if you stick chewing gum between the, like two parts of, of a glasses, it kind of holds as long as you don't move it. But I do want to know, like, does it hold the pressure of, you know, putting it onto your head and whatnot? So and that's a mediocre pitch at the best. Reusable, moldable plastic sticks for DIY fixes is the business on offer from Chris Lefteri and Forrest Radford. And it takes approximately a minute for the stick to become fully soft. They're asking for £45,000 in return for 12% of their company. The hotter the temperature, the softer it becomes. Peter Jones is first to quiz the design engineer duo. Quite the tea drinker. So guys, this is, it's interesting. So, <laughs> in essence, it's just, feels a bit like sort of putty. Yeah. Yes. When it gets molten, it becomes more moldable and malleable. Right. Is there a bit of a skill to knowing how to fix something using fix-its? Because uh, uh, watching Peter do it, I mean, it was a total mess. Oh. <laughs> it went everywhere, like, like yeah, a baby with chewing gum. It yeah. was really just... But look at my ring. Interesting point there. It makes sense to tell people, ideally, you put it in there for 30 seconds, which is now... And then please just form it in your, between your thumb and your finger for approximately 10 seconds. Apply, squeeze, count to three, and perfect fit. So what I'm trying to say is you don't want people to maybe not have the ideal scenario where it suddenly goes like, like this, no other way that you can see me, whoop, like this, or the chewing on me part. But you want to make people have the perfect experience in that moment. So what am I trying to say is guide people through the experience um, in a good way. This was more like, yeah, just try it out, stick it in there, you'll be fine. Um, and we'll see, probably what we're just seeing right now is mixed results. And that's something you wouldn't want to have, um, what you wouldn't want to have on a product demo. Ah, well, Deborah obviously knows, and I'm sure Sarah... Know. Mine's perfect. Um, I have fixed the non-broken hand sanitizer. And very beautifully too, may I say. I think that's user repeater, not uh, 
Is this an existing material that you are using in a new way? Or Again, there they fail to say if they have some sort of IP. So this is a question um, that Deborah Meaden has to ask that you should have had in your pitch, saying, we have a patent, we have this and that IP, the process, whatnot. Something you don't want investors to pull out of your nose. Um, well, let's, let's, let's hear the full question. New material. Yeah, that's a great question. Oh, full of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it comes from industry where it's used as an adhesive. Right, so actually what you're telling me is this is just an existing material that's out there that you've come up with a clever use for, so therefore the USP... Well, there's not a USP. It's a, this is now a marketing play, not really a product you've invented. That's right. OK, so you strike me as being like inventor people, <laughs> not marketeers. Yep. Yep, very correct. So to make it successful, you need marketing people. Absolutely, which is why we need your help. She's not impressed. Chris? I mean, I always say never pitch alone, but I mean, Sarah Davies' question was bang on the money. I said it kind of before as well. <sighs> they're two designers. They're, they're no marketeers. Now, they have no USP and they have no IP, but it's all about go-to-market, all about execution. And at least just on the paper, they seem to be lacking it. And again, in the pitch, this kind of makes your position weaker and weaker and weaker and dilutes the valuation you have. They said they uh, were looking for 12% for 45,000. Um, so that's uh, 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 of, um, what's that? Uh, that's um, 375,000. I mean, yeah, okay. But still, it's, it, it, it's a weak position. It's a weak position. One would expect, and they also haven't done that, that they would have talked about traction. Now, if they have incredible traction, that's something else again, yet they've also failed to disclose that. Um, so it could be anything from an idea to uh, a number one selling product, yet they have not given us the data um, to underline it. They're here for help with flogging their fix-its. Peter Jones now wants to know when the inventors morphed into businessmen. Or if. Okay, so when did you... What's the journey been? How long has this taken you to put this together? So it's been on the market since we launched in 2018. Oh, wow. So four years ago. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the journey of initially was building the story and building the brand. And we did focus a lot on craft as well as fixing. And we found that became quite confusing because it's a hard enough product to explain because I have to tell you what it does and then the benefit. If you then say, oh, it's a craft product as well, it makes it even harder. So it took us a year to really refine that message and to say, we really only want to focus on fixing. OK, so in 2019, what were your sales? Uh, so in 2019, our sales were £10,800 turnover. And then 2020 to 21? £54,400. And what would be your gross margin on that? Uh, so the pack of three sticks, no, on that 54,000, what was your gross margin? Uh, I know our gross... It, it was a loss. It was a loss. You sold it for less than you bought it for? Yeah, we, we made a loss. We made a loss. I mean... What, at gross level? Yeah. Wow, so why would you make a product that costs more than you sell it at? Well, our gross included um, uh, salaries. But that doesn't... That's not your gross margin. <sighs> This is quite shocking, but I'm going to ask you a question that I don't often ask. Do you understand what gross profit is? Well, our gross profit is based on the cost of the production of the sticks. Yeah. Uh, fees, salaries. Why? Why? No, well, th that, that's, what, that's what our accounts have. I, mean, I shouldn't be trying to help you because you should know this. But basically, I mean, I've got to jump in there. I mean, I used to be very bad in school. Um, and nowadays I lectured a couple of universities. What I'm trying to say is it's incredible how quickly you can smell if someone knows their stuff or not. And just watching the two, um, um, Chris and Forrest, Peter really has them, he's got them cornered. And it might be stress, it might be that moment. But the thing is, if you are pitching or talking about your product, knowing your numbers are things you need to be able to know 
religiously. This is not kind of nice to know, but essentially it's like being in control of your numbers is like if you're a pilot and you need to know how much fuel you have, how far you can get. You need to know roughly where you're navigating to, what the nearest airport is, blah, 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 blah. But the point is, if you don't know your numbers, you are going to crash. And imagine meeting a pilot and you say, look, Captain, how much fuel do we have? And the answer is like, I'm not sure. I hope we'll be fine. How do we measure that? I don't know. Do we know it? No, I think it's like how much liquidy stuff we put in or out. I don't know. That's not confident inspiring, right? And the two of them there, I mean, for me at this point in time, if I were to hear this, I'd ask them like, how the F did you navigate your company throughout the last four years without knowing these absolute basics? So I would assume that if I were to look at the books and start doing like the most basic research to find a company in shambles that has just kind of survived by pure luck, the only thing is that he might have a brain fade, yet his co-founder wasn't able to solve it either. So I'd rather go for option A, they just have no effing clue what they're on about. And that's really scary, um, at least from a business point of view. You need to understand, yes, you are pitching a product, but actually what you're doing, and I see that, say this in every single video, you are pitching the ability to build a company around this product that can actually deliver this product and make a profit or make some kind of, well, mainly profit, something could be impact, but let's stay with a profit and make a profit. That's the, that's the essence of entrepreneurship. Everything else is just having an idea. And, the, the, oh, Jesus, Chris and Forrest, um, oh, let, 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 let's see how Peter Jones reacts. But that, that's for me. I mean, the title was very promising. This is, I mean, hmm. If this product, you're selling it for £10, the direct costs in putting that product together to sell at £10 is deducted to create your gross margin, yes. gross profit. I have those numbers for you on an individual level. So what does it cost That's to make? Answer. For the three-pack, it costs us 94 pence to make. And what do you sell it for? 9 99 retail. So what is your gross margin? On that product, it's 89%. So what would be your gross profit on that 54k mm. you should have that literally off the top of your head my apologies we... no but you still can't can you do that now <laughs> no okay the entrepreneurs come well and truly unstuck as their gross margin remains a mystery and Tuka Suleiman wants to find out if they have a better grip on their That's current brutal. trading I mean it takes like five seconds to calculate so this year, um, how, how, how much have you done so far? So we're coming to the end of our financial year. So, but so what would that be? Around like 54. 54. So again. same, again. Yeah. Same. So really, the business is stagnant. Yeah. Every entrepreneur looks for a product where you make 89% margin. You know, unfortunately, we also want that product to be in, in heavy demand, which this is not. And I think... And just to say, like, 89% margin is killer. And as Tuka just said it so nicely, so those numbers match up. This sounds like a good product. But having a stagnating demand, meaning you put it into the market, you expect that the first few people get onto it and go like, oh, this is really great. Tell their friends about it. More demand, more demand, more demand, more demand. So we're trying to show a projected growth, right? We're saying, look, this is the way it's going. It's going upwards. Sounds pretty bad like this way. So it's going upwards. And at the same time, that's how we earn money. <sighs> no growth, um, good margin, but no business acumen. That's really dangerous. <laughs> I mean, but that look. <sighs> He's onto something, isn't he, Stephen? But anyhow. The difficulty is, as you quite rightfully said, you've got to explain what this is. And even if, you, if this was on QVC or home shopping, it's a hard sell. It needs a rethink from where to, to get the message across. But as you are today, it's not investable. And for that reason, I'm out. 
Just to jump in there, I don't think it's much of a hard sell. I think I don't think it's hard to explain either because what you need to do is you need to t- take a product your consumers know and would normally use, in this case probably glue or sticky tape or whatnot, and demo the current limitations of these products and then you demo your product against it and then you give us numbers to it. You say, look, with the glue you'd normally do this, boop, 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 you end up having sticky fingers and it can only take three pounds of pressure. I'm making this up on the go, by the way. Yet with ours, you mold it, it takes a minute, you add it, you make sure it kind of dries or whatever it is. Yet it doesn't take three pounds of pressure, but it takes 35 pounds of pressure. And therefore, it makes it as good as new. Where you go like, oh, wow, this is really good. Or you say, you can take it in your pocket, you're on the go, and if something breaks when you're outside with your kids playing and their favorite toy breaks, just pull it out, you know, s- smuddle it up in your hands until it gets nice and warm, smudge it on, and it's fixed instantly. So what we're trying to do is use it with something comparable, show us how it works, add some numbers to it, and you're done. I, 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 don't, see the, I don't see the challenge behind actually telling the story around it. Maybe my, my brain is just too simple or I don't know what. Tuka Suleiman thinks the product confuses as much as it fixes and is the first dragon to bow out. Does the waste reducing proposition have more appeal to Deborah Meaden? Um, there's so much I love about it. Obviously, the repair, the you know, the, the fixing of things. I think the big worry for me is the amount of information that you are going to have to get out there to get people to understand this. Um, people don't take an exam when they're out shopping. Um, they want to understand really quickly why that is going to help me. So I think you've got a real barrier, and I know you know that. I'm only. Re- playing yeah. back to you exactly what you know is the problem. But sometimes that problem can stop a business taking off when there are alternatives. So I'm, I'm really sorry. I won't be investing. I'm out. Compare it to the alternatives. For guys that don't understand how to market a product, um, I think you've, you've done a really good job. I think it's striking. I think the packaging's good. Oh, that's I think what the they do, right? The cost that you've got the product for is remarkable. But it does come down to the size of the opportunity. And in my opinion, this is certainly, it's no post it note. I think you'll sell quite a lot and I think you'll do okay. But I don't think it's investment ready. So for that reason, I'm out. But, but well done. It's, it's a nice product. Peter Jones walks away from a deal and it's three dragons down for the entrepreneurs. Will Sarah Davies help them out of their sticky situation? Well, honestly, from my point of view, I'm a bit disappointed. Because I I really, when I heard it, I was like, oh, this looks really exciting. This is great. But it's actually just just a a ready-made, it's just a plastic that's out there on the market. Yeah, in in simple terms, yes, but we don't think many people know what this material would be or where to source it, but I suppose, yeah. Well, any random Tom, Dick or Harry off the street might not, but I'm sure if I went and spoke to the industrial designers that I work with in the moulding company, they could probably break that down and say, oh, yeah, it's such and such. (laughs) Very possibly. It's probably going to end up doing that, right? I'm sorry, guys. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't. I don't think it's a business and an investable proposition you can take forward. Because they so failed me, to say how they protect it. I understand. Thank you. And they Thanks. failed. They failed to say what their IP is, and they failed to say what their go-to market is. If they'd have a brutal go-to marketing marketing strategy, that's okay. Or if they would have an IP, it's okay. Yet they have neither nor. <sighs> So I'm intrigued about Stephen's look. Oh, I'm glad they're all gone. Um, I yeah, I disagree with all of them. I knew it. Uh, for so many reasons, because this is an art, what I call an aha product, where you see it within like 20, 30 seconds, as we kind of did in your initial explanation, and you go, oh my god, that's really cool, right? And that kind of aha product is suited to certain sales platforms and storytelling platforms, and honestly. The one right now that is just exploding with this kind of stuff is TikTok. Look how 
how excited he gets. But what, what, I, what I find so interesting about this, I'd love to know if this is, I'd love to know this from Stephen. I'd love to look inside his brain now. If he thinks it's something where he can just kind of create a quick hype, boop, people buy it once and never buy it again, or if he really thinks this product could become sticky. With that, I mean, not something like the fidget spinner, which was like super popular for whatever it was, like a year. I, I, numbers might be wrong. It was blown through the roof via social media. Who's buying fidget spinners nowadays? Like no one, no one. Um, or if he believes that this could just be a point of entry into people's minds who would then become repetitive buyers. I'd, I'd be super curious. Um, my gut feeling is just looking at this product, it does not create repeat buyers because the numbers are stagnating. Um, so Stephen would just be in there for the quick win, which is perfectly fine. That's how business can work. But I just, I just love to know that. What you've got here is a real storytelling problem. But because it's an aha product, it's easy to solve if you know how to create that video and how to distribute that video at the right audience. So um, I'm going to make you an offer. Huh. Um, I'm going to offer you all the money because all of my fellow dragons are out, which is nice. It's normally competitive here, but they all dipped out. I was happy that Sarah Davis dipped out because if she had wanted it, that would have been tough. Um, <laughs> But I'm gonna, I'm gonna want 25% of the business. So that's my offer. I think I, you've nailed it. Great with that. Wow, well, go, go. Thank, Thank you. 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 I can't wait to work with you. Really excited. Thank you so much, guys. No negotiation necessary, as Chris and Forrest accept Stephen Bartlett's terms, and they depart with the £45,000 they were seeking. Done. We did it. Wow. Breathless, speechless, incredible. <laughs> that was amazing. That was amazing. Well done. I was really excited about it. I thought there was going to be some war. <laughs> told you. I told you one could see the excitement in Stephen's face, and therefore I always say never pitch alone because you always need to have a second person to observe the facial expressions, do your homework on to whom you are, presenting because look i've done a couple of these videos and i think i can tell when the individual dragons um or sharks get interested and that's something you don't want to have to just find out the first time you're pitching live but you want to have to rehearse that and, and observe that 40 times 50 times 60 times that you know once you start negotiating that you say hey by the way i saw steve over there he seemed very interested he hasn't said anything yet but he probably will because he likes this kind of stuff um, that's a very interesting and very important bit of information. So never pitch alone. And the other thing I want to mention is very smart that they didn't end up negotiating at the end because I think they quickly understood that they were with their backs to the wall because essentially they'd been told off. They'd been told off, look, guys, you don't know your numbers. You don't know how to build a business. You're lucky to be alive. And we all don't believe in this product. And one guy says and goes like, hmm, I think I could build that one perfect video to kind of smash this through the wall, uh, through the roof. They don't know how. Stephen does. Um, they could be en ending up having a business that'll probably die sooner or later anyway because of the lack of execution. So it's their only lifeline. Very smart on not negotiating and taking that deal. And um, so I told you, I usually look at these videos like, like, like I just glance over them before and then just look at them for the first time with you. Um, so what I haven't done yet is um, I, I have no idea how, how their business went. Um, that's the next thing I'm going to do now after this video and editing it and uploading it and asking you kindly to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button. Um, please do. That makes me very happy. But I'd be interested if it was just a up and down, or if this product became sticky or not. I'll find out. Let's see. And, and by the way, I'm just curious what you think about this. Let me know in the comments. I would love that. In that sense, thank you very much. Take care, stay safe, and see you next week. Bye-bye.